off on a different path than mine I'm left behind Wondering if I should follow You had to go and of course it's always fine Then I turn around and find I am lost in the woods North is south, right is left Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Christmas time, so I am not standing in my normal spot because this giant Christmas tree... Uh, I couldn't even get it all the way up to the top. Um, it is sitting right where I would normally be standing. So I am on the floor. <sighs> so today's video is one that I hadn't really planned on doing, um, but I ran a Twitter poll about what video I should film this week. And this video was the overwhelming majority of answers. So if you don't like this video, you have only yourselves to blame because you didn't vote in my Twitter poll and I will put my handle down below so this doesn't happen again. So of course the good old book Twitter people picked the video that would be the absolute most work for me to do. They picked that I should talk about every unread book that is on my physical shelves and their priority in terms of when I'm gonna get around to reading them. So I have just spent the last like half an hour combing through my three different bookcases, one of which is behind this tree up against the wall, so it was very difficult to get to, pulling all of the unread books from those shelves into this massive pile that you're not even seeing a third of. I was thinking about uh, going in order from like lowest priority to highest priority, but then I realized that I'd have to sort them all and fuck that. I just spent half an hour pulling them. I'm not gonna go sort them into piles. Oh, I also didn't count how many unread books there are, but I'll put it up on the screen afterwards. I'm just not doing it now. So this is gonna be pretty haphazard, but I'm gonna start with books that I have either borrowed from the library or borrowed from a friend. God damn it, I have all those other books. <sighs> okay. I actually have all of them now. So the very first physical book that I have on my shelves that I haven't read yet is Resenting the Hero by Maura J. Moore. This is a high fantasy that my friend recommended to me. She said that it inverted a lot of fun fantasy tropes, um, but it also had some of the tropes that we really like in it. At the moment, it is like a medium high priority. I've had this one on my shelves for a couple years and I need to give it back. Um, I then have a series of short, trashy queer books. A couple of them are manga that I've borrowed from the same friend that I haven't read yet. This is uh, basically a um, parody of like Nancy Drew and it is the case of the not so nice nurse, a Nancy Clue mystery um, and yeah, it's basically hijinks in the 50s with lesbians. I haven't read it, so I don't know how good the representation is, but it should be fun. Secret of the Princess, this is a uh, queer manga, and Bloom Into You, another queer manga. These are, I think this one is like a one shot, um, and Bloom Into You is like a series, and this is the first volume. They're like medium-ish priority. They shouldn't take me too long to get through. The next is, uh, this Lord of the White Hell series. I have books one and two. They're by Jin Hale. I don't remember anything about what these are about. I think they're queer, but that's all I got. Pretty low priority, if I'm honest. The next is Max Gladstone, Two Serpents Rise. This is book two in the Wizard Lawyers um, series. Novel of the Craft Sequence, that's the actual title. I call it the Wizard Lawyers series. Um, these are published super out of order, so this is both the second in publishing order and the second in like the world order, but the first book in publishing order that I read a while ago, Three Parts Dead, is the third in the world's chronological order. I don't know. I'm gonna read them in publishing order first, and then if I like the series, I'll go back and read it in chronological order. We'll see. But it does have wizard lawyers negotiating contracts between gods and their followers, and that's kind of my jam. Um, so the next one is Red, White, and Royal Blue. This is a super popular uh, contemporary romance about the president's son and the prince of England, I think. It's like 
medium high priority. I started it, I need to get back into it. The next book that I have borrowed from a friend is American Hippo. This is by Sarah Gailey. It's basically an alternate history of the US where like hippos lived in the Mississippi. I don't really get it, but it's like an alternate Wild West kind of a thing. And that seems fun. So like medium-ish priority. And the last one is Prior of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. Um, this is high priority because it's going to be due back at the library soon and I have barely started it. It's also like 800 pages. So those are all the books that I've borrowed. Now moving on to ones that I actually own. Um, we have Lair of Dreams by Libba Bray. Low priority. I need to reread The Diviners and I'm not super inspired to do that right now, but I'll get to it eventually. Low priority. The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. I picked this up on a whim uh, at a used bookstore and I'm not really into it, so low priority. The Tropic of Serpents. This is book two in a series that's like alternate fantasy, alternate history of our world where dragons exist and it follows this like lady, um, what's the word? And it follows this woman who considers herself like a dragon naturalist, where basically she goes and finds them in the wild and studies them. And it's set in like Victorian-ish era, I think. I read the first one and I enjoyed it, but then I kind of lost momentum on the series. So this is low priority. The next is an entire trilogy by Greg Van Eekhout. Uh, this starts with California Bones. And the premise of this one is actually really interesting. And I bought these a while ago and have been thinking that I really need to pick them up. So they're like medium high priority, but they um, are in an alternate version of California that has like split into like two different states or two different countries, I forget. And people get magic by grinding up and ingesting the bones of dead mythological creatures. So like krakens and dragons and that kind of stuff. And there's a whole trilogy and I should just really fucking read it. So medium-ish. Uh, I, so I have John Green's An Abundance of Catherines and John Green's Turtles All the Way Down. Medium low priority, especially Abundance of Catherines. I don't know that I'm ever gonna read that one. I have Two Boys Kissing by David Leviathan. Um, Levithan? Levithan, not Leviathan, yikes. I got it at a signing and it was nice to go see him talk because I had read his books when I was in high school and they meant a lot to me. I don't know, medium low. The Rose Society by Marie Lu. This is book two in her uh, Young Elites series. I finished her Legend series a few years ago. I did not like it. I remember liking the first one of this series a lot more than I liked Legend, but I read the first one many, many years ago and I'd have to reread it. So this is like low priority. Check out my War of the Worlds mug, by the way. And in case you were wondering, this is apple juice because that's the kind of 30 year old that I am. So we have Fury of the Phoenix by Cindy Pond. This is low priority because I don't really remember the first book. The first um, one is Silver Phoenix. And I could probably read this one without refreshing Silver Phoenix. I don't think they're linked that closely, but it's been so many years. I seriously lost momentum on this one. Um, we have an omnibus of Holic. This is, I think, the only other manga that's in this mess. This contains volumes 13, 14, and 15 of Holic, which is like a urban fantasy story about a boy who sees ghosts who like apprentices himself to a witch who runs a wish granting shop. It is very enjoyable, but by the end turns rather tragic. So I have been putting off getting to these last volumes because I don't want that to happen. So medium low. Uh, the next is Tamora Pierce's Tortal and Otherlands. This is a short story collection, and so this is the only Tamora Pierce book that I have on my shelves that I haven't actually read, um, because I just don't really do short stories. I think I read a couple in here, but I never finished the collection, and it's not a priority. So we also have Terry Pratchett's Snuff. Um, this is one of his last books that he wrote before he passed away. And for that reason, I have not really been able to get myself to read it. Um, I think if I read some other Terry Pratchett's, I can eventually get to this one, um, but I need to kind of get back into the world of Discworld before I can uh, tackle this one. I do have two more Terry Pratchett's though. I have a Monstrous Regiment and Making Money. And these I am 
bumping up to like medium high priority. I think I'm going to try to read them this next year because I have been somewhat getting back into Terry Pratchett and just thinking about him more with the Good Omens TV show that came out. I'm finally getting around to watching it. I'm very behind. Um, but it's reminding me all of the things that I loved about Terry Pratchett's writing. And so I want to get back into it. So medium high priority. The Rose and the Dagger by Renee Audier. This is the sequel to... I can't remember. I'm going to put a picture. But the Scheherazade Thousand and One Nights retelling. As you might be able to guess, low priority. I don't know that I am really inclined to finish this series. I might just leave it at having only read the first one. Ah, fuck. Oh, that was a stack of books toppling off the table. I will deal with that later. So we've got And I Darken by Kirsten White. This is like a Vlad the Impaler fan fiction, alternate history. I've heard mixed reviews on this, so it's kind of low priority. I have two non-fictions, um, which I, if I read them, will probably actually be on audiobook because I just find that reading nonfiction in physical print form feels too much like doing a homework assignment, um, but I can do them on audiobook, and that's just someone telling me a fun story that happens to be true. So they are Cleopatra by Stacey Schiff, um, which is just about Cleopatra, and What Jane Austen Ate and Charles Dickens Knew, which is basically about like the daily life of 19th century England. And that's always my kind of jam with history. I love learning about how just like normal people did their shit. Um, but yeah, I just don't know that I'm going to get to them in physical form. I have this weird little stack of mass market paperbacks, um, which have no real theme, um, but just kind of live together in my mass market paperbacks that have no real theme section of my bookshelf. They are Sorcery and Cecilia by um, Patricia C. Reed and Caroline Stevermare, I think. This is an epistolary novel, so it's like written in letters between these two friends that are talking about like all of the magical hijinks that they're getting into. I should read this one, but who knows when I'll have time, so medium low. The Aeneid of Virgil, I don't know why I have this. A friend of mine had an extra copy and I took it. I'm never gonna read this. Um, I Never Promised You a Rose Garden. I don't remember exactly which mental disorder this tackles, but it is like a contemporary that was written some decades ago um, about a woman who goes through a uh, mental episode, basically. Um, it's one of my friend's like favorite books, so I picked it up at a used book sale and I should get to it. Um, the Wounded Sky by Diane Duane. I don't really have an excuse for this one. It's a Star Trek fan fiction novel. Um, I really liked some of Diane Duane's books when I was a kid. And so when I saw this at like a big used book sale, I was just like, yeah, sure, why not? That's all I got. Uh, Cats Have No Lord by Will Shetterly. I picked this up for like a dollar at a used bookstore because it looked funny. Wilkie Collins, The Woman in White. This is a gothic um, and I love gothics. I love how batshit they are. Apparently this one is very batshit. Um, I think if I'm gonna do it, I would do it in audiobook because that just works better for me. So I'm gonna say like medium priority if I remember to get the audiobook. Until then, low priority. Uh, this is a book that I picked up in the UK when I went like three-ish years ago. Um, it's low priority, it's a fantasy, but I can't remember anything else about what it's about. These two I picked up also in the UK, but in my more recent trip over the summer. I think these are books that you can get in the US, but I checked their covers and they're horrible in the US, so I picked them up in the UK. They are the Gospel of Loki and the Testament of Loki. They're basically the retellings of the Norse myths from Loki's point of view. They're like medium-ish priority. It's for when I really want to read a Rick Riordan book, but I've already read all the Rick Riordan books, so I'll go for those. Okay, these are all of the books by Kate Elliott that I haven't read yet. Um, the Poison Blade is like a medium low priority because I need to reread, um, what was it? Court of Fives, which is book one in the series because I don't remember enough about what happened in book one in order to read book two. And then this is an entire trilogy that I read book one or I started book one and then I got kind of bogged down in the middle and I don't know if I'm gonna make it back to these ones, but I would like to, cause she has like continued on in that world with other series and it does seem really interesting. It has people that ride these like giant eagles, like check this shit out. 
if you don't think that that looks cool as hell, I don't know what to tell you, but we'll see. I have a couple from Alexandra Bracken. These are all continuations in series that I've started. Um, so this is The Darkest Legacy, which is the fourth book of the Darkest Minds series. This takes place um, much after the Darkest Minds trilogy and is focused on Zoo instead of Ruby. So it's kind of a new series, but I think she's considering it part of the same series. That's like medium high. I've been meaning to get to that one. I just ran out of time this year. The next is Wayfarer. This is book two of her like time travel one. I think the first one's Passenger. This is low priority. I really liked the first book when I started it and then I let it sit too long and I kind of lost interest and I still just really prefer her Darkest Mind series. So I don't know, low-ish priority. So these are all books by Liz Williams. She's a fantasy author. These two, um, Mass Markets, Snake Agent, and The Demon and the City are part of a series that's Detective Inspector Chen, and they're set in Singapore. So this was one of like the first fantasy series that featured like an Asian main character, although it's urban fantasy. Um, but it's also written by a white lady, and this was kind of before Own Voices was a thing. So I don't know, I meant to read this for a while and I maybe lost interest, I don't know. The next is World Soul, which is I think about if library books were like dangerous or just books were dangerous. It just seems like fun with book magic and it's like a medium low priority because I kind of forgot that I had this one. In a kind of similar vein, I have um, Bridge of Birds by Barry Hugart, which is a fantasy that is based off of ancient China and is written by a white dude. I did ask some of my uh, Chinese speaking friends if they, uh, you know, how they felt about this one. And they said that it actually wasn't too bad. So it's not off my TBR, but it is just maybe kind of low on it. The next I have is some books by an author called C.S. Friedman that I doubt any of you have heard of. She was a fantasy author that was more popular in the sort of early 2000s. This is the third book in her Cold Fire trilogy, which I did really enjoy the first book of. And then I got kind of sick of the series by the end of the second one. And then I lost momentum and I don't know that I'll ever manage to finish it. And then this is an entire trilogy books, I think one, two, and three. Um, and again, I don't know that I'll ever really get to them. Um, I have another slightly random assortment of fantasy mass market trade paperbacks. These are all low priority. I might sell some of these to use bookstores without actually reading them, but let's just go through them real quick. Princess at Sea, Dawn Cook. This is the second in a series that I would have to read the first book in to get to book two. This is a common theme. Um, Faded by Benedict Giacca. Benedict I, yeah, I don't know how to pronounce that. This series was a little more interesting to me when I was still interested in The Dresden Files by Jim Butcher, but I'm no longer into that series. So this is supposed to be very similar to that. And I don't really like that anymore. So low priority. The Mirror Empire by Cameron Hurley. I bought this off of a recommendation from a friend, but then I started hearing a lot of mixed reviews about this series. So I don't know that I'm gonna get to it. Low priority. Connie Willis, To Say Nothing of the Dog. Um, this is like a time travel hijinks sci-fi and I should get to it, but it's been on my shelf for so long. I don't even know. The only Jane Austen that I have on my shelf that I haven't read is uh, Jane Austen's Selected Letters. This one is nonfiction selections of her letters. And it's, it's on my list, but it's not very high. Um, this next is P.G. Woodhouse, Money for Nothing. This is also the only P.G. Woodhouse that I have that I haven't read. And this is not related to his Jeeves and Wooster books, which are mostly what I read of his. So this is like medium low. I feel like I'm ordering a steak. Yeah, I'd like that medium low. So I have a couple books that I bought because I follow the authors on YouTube. First is If Only by Melanie Murphy. This is like a magical realism contemporary where she gets like a necklace from her grandmother and it allows her to see like alternate versions of her life. Medium priority. Um, and then On the Other Side by Carrie Hope Fletcher. This is like a another magical realism contemporary romance about like dying and unfinished business and but happy and romance. I have Of Fire and Stars by Audrey Coldhurst. Um, this is a female female romance fantasy story. Um, I did not realize that this was part of a series. I thought that this was a standalone. Um, I bogged down about halfway through this book. Um, I found 
that it was just going really slowly and not really holding my interest. So now that I know that there's even more of them, and once I finish this book, I may still not be free. I don't know that I'm gonna get to it. We have an absolutely remarkable thing by Hank Green. Oh, I guess this one should have gone in the YouTube section. Anyway, medium high priority. I started this one and I really enjoyed it. The next is Borderline by Michelle Baker. This is an urban fantasy that I think has something to do with like secret organizations in the government that keep track of magical creatures, something like that. I have Anger is a Gift by Marcus Shiro. This is a contemporary, yes. It's actually set in Oakland, which is very close to where I live. And obviously I haven't read it. I don't really remember the premise, but I know that it deals with things like police brutality and you know, that kind of fun stuff. My Sister Rosa by Justine Larbeleister. This is about a main character who thinks that her younger sister is like a sociopath. I'll say medium high. I don't think there's any like fantasy or sci-fi elements to it, but I could be wrong. I've been wrong before with Justine Larbeleister's books where I thought that they were straight contemporary and then they took a fantasy turn. The next I have is Spontaneous by Aaron Starmer. This uh, is a like contemporary where people start spontaneously combusting and that's basically all I know about it, but like medium high, because apparently it's really funny. I have Red Rising by Pierce Brown. This is a fantasy series. I have a friend who really loves this series, so I'm keeping it at like medium priority, but it, I read the back and it just seems like such a boy book that I'm just like, mm, I don't know. We'll see. Paul Cornwell, Falling London. This is low priority. It is a urban fantasy. I don't remember any more of the details. I have The Wicked King by Holly Black. This is the sequel to The Cruel Prince. I should get to this, especially now that the series is done. Even though I know a lot of people didn't like the third book, I still want to finish the series. Uh, I might need to read book one again first. I might need to read Cruel Prince. So for now, this is like medium low priority until I read Cruel Prince again. I have The Accident Season by Moira Fowley Doyle. This is like magical realism where there's this one family where there's one day a year that they're seriously accident prone. I next, ooh, <laughs> I next have this massive pile of books all from author Carol Berg. Um, this one is a standalone. I don't remember anything about what it's about. So that one's fairly low priority, but this one is, oh, this one I've actually read. This one is book two to the book that I said I'd already read. And I think I need to reread book one before I can read book two. Um, and then this entire trilogy, The Spirit Lens, The Soul Mirror, and The Demon Prism, they're like magical artifacts in like Renaissance Italy, basically. And oh God, that third cover is not good. None of them are great, but this one's better. Let's go with that. Sure. And these ones, I tried to read book one over and over and over again, and it was not happening. And I think I need to read it in audiobook because there's just something about the written style that I think I will do better in audiobook. So, cause this is also one of my friend's favorite series and she keeps telling me to read it. And I know that I will enjoy it if I can get past the beginning, but I think I need an audiobook to do that. The next I have is Angel Maker by Nick Harkaway medium low priority. I started it and I was enjoying it, but I've now forgotten everything about it. Um, Lady Cop Makes Trouble by Amy Stewart. This is book two in a series um, that is like based off of a real person, but it's a fiction novel series. And it's about one of the very first um, woman sheriffs, I think. And I really enjoyed book one. So this is like medium priority. I have The Bone Gap by Laura Ruby. This is low priority because I don't really remember anything about it. Uh, I just know that it's magical realism and people disappear. That's it. Um, the Power by Naomi Alderman. This is a science fiction, I think, or fantasy about what if women suddenly had the ability to like kill with just their touch low-ish. It had very controversial reviews. I have Zero Boxer by Fonda Lee. This was low priority. It's now like medium priority because I really enjoyed the Jade War or Jade City trilogy. I forget what the overarching series is, but she also wrote this standalone science fiction about like boxing in space. And it didn't super seem like my kind of thing, but I will give it a try now that I know that I like the author. So like medium. I have Heroin Complex by Sarah Kuhn. This is like medium low priority. It's basically about a young girl who is a PA to a superhero. 
and it's supposed to be like fun and irreverent and so I do want to give it a try I just haven't yet so I have Silvio Morena Silvia Moreno Garcia um, certain dark things I this is very high priority because I am currently reading it and it is about vampires in Mexico City including a vampire type that is like descended from the indigenous people of Mexico so I am really enjoying it so far even though I find a lot of vampire stories pretty played out this is a really interesting take on them so we have What We Left Behind by Robin Talley. This is a queer contemporary young adult romance. This is about a queer relationship uh, between this couple who are separating to go to college and one of them identifies as a queer woman and one of them identer, <laughs> identer. And one of them identifies as genderqueer and just sort of they're shifting identities and are they growing apart kind of thing. Medium-ish priority. I am curious about how the non-binary rep is in that book because I don't think I've really seen it in other books before. Completely changing tracks, I have The House of Seven Gables by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Um, this is supposed to be like a spooky gothic, so I might try this one on audiobook and maybe you will see it in a Fall Reads recommendations video in the future. I have one Neil Gaiman book on here, which is Trigger Warnings. This is a collection of short stories, which to be honest is why I haven't read it because I just don't really do short stories that much. I have two books by Sarah Waters, classic lesbian fiction. Um, well, one of them is actually a like horror gothic called The Little Stranger. This one I don't think is explicitly queer. I think it's like her only book that isn't explicitly queer, um, but it's like a super spooky haunted house gothic. So I do want to read this one, um, especially for maybe next fall time. Um, and The Paying Guess, this is like a straight lesbian historical fantasy, not fantasy, lesbian fiction book. Um, I can't remember when it is set, but I think they commit a murder at some point. I then have Dorothy Dunnett's A Game of Kings. This is one of these sort of original swashbuckling uh, anachronistic adventure series. It kind of spawned a lot of others. Um, and I think I would really enjoy this. I just haven't been able to fit it into my schedule. So medium low. The Girl from Everywhere uh, by Heidi Hel Helig. Yes. <laughs> The Girl from Everywhere, uh, written by Heidi Halig. This is very low priority. It's a time travel young adult, and I'm kind of sick of those. I then have Terry Pratchett and Stephen Baxter's The Long Earth. Um, this is a science fiction series. It's pretty low priority. Um, I've kept it on my shelf because it was written by Terry Pratchett, but I don't know that I've heard anyone actually talk about this series and like it, so... Yeah, we'll see. I have a quick little collection of short stories. I'll try to go through quickly. These are all low priority. Um, Ted Chang, Stories of Your Life and Others. Um, this includes the short story that the book, not the book, the movie Arrival was um, based off of. So it's interesting to me, but I don't know when I'll get to it. Um, diverse Energies. This is just like a collection of queer spec, not queer, of diverse speculative fiction. I think maybe some of it's queer. Um, but I, some of it, you know, as people of color, I just don't really read short stories, so who knows? Um, Welcome to Border Town. I maybe could have skipped this one. I've read most of this one, so it's low priority because I kind of feel like I've already read it. And The Coyote Road Trickster Tales, they're all like based off of trickster narratives, which at least is fun. The next that I have is Sound by Alexandra Duncan. This is a companion novel to a book that I think I lent out to a friend like six years ago. God knows if I'll ever get that one back. And honestly, I have no idea what this one's about, so it's kind of low priority. I then have Clariel by Garth Nix. This is the prequel to the Sabriel series, which I think I recommended on my fall reads this year about like anti-necromancers who put the dead back to rest. Highly recommend that series. Haven't checked out the prequel yet. Then we have Updraft by Fran Wilde. This one I'm gonna say is medium high priority. Um, I know the series finished and so I am more motivated to get started on it if I can just get through it quickly. Um, and then Enchantment of Ravens, this is like medium priority. It's a fantasy that involves the Fae. I just don't remember anything else about that. And now we are down to the final four, which are the 
highest of priorities, the ones that I am the most excited about. The first that we have is Mooncakes. This is a graphic novel by Wendy Zhu and Suzanne Walker. Um, and this is very high priority because I think I'm going to try to read it for the Fantasy-a-thon, which starts like tomorrow, I think. And this will fill a bunch of categories. It is about a witch and she meets back up with her like childhood crush who is a non-binary werewolf and hijinks and hopefully romance ensue. Um, I then have Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Stiefvater. This is the beginning of the Dreamer trilogy which follows up from the Raven Cycle Quartet. Very excited about this one although maybe I will wait till book two comes out so that I don't do the thing of reading book one and then forgetting everything in book one by the time book two comes out like what seems to happen so often. The next is God's Grave by Jay Kristoff. This is high priority because I finished book one earlier this year and I had a lot of problems with the beginning of the book, but I really enjoyed it by the end. So I definitely want to see what is happening in the world. And the last book that is a physical book that I have on my TBR, because we're not even getting into all of the eBooks and all of the audiobooks that I have sitting in my Kindle and Audible libraries, we're not even touching those. So the last physical TBR book is The True Queen by Zen Cho. This is high priority because I have already started it. I enjoyed Sorcerer to the Crown so much and I am really excited to see how the second book comes out. So that was it. This video is going to be a monstrosity to edit. If it comes out two hours long, you have only yourselves to blame. But if you have made it to the end, first of all, well done. That is some dedication. And second of all, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys very soon with another video. Bye! I have to put these all back now. How dare you? Yeah, this is gonna take forever. Also, I almost forgot. If there was something that I ranked as high priority that you think I should not read or something low priority that you think that I should read, tell me down in the comments and you can try to convince me. You probably won't succeed, but you can try. <laughs>